tribes of Israel that have been scattered. Where are we scattered them over right? Worldwide. Where? According to our holy manuscript to the four corners of the earth. And the question is, is the Bible true? And the answer is yes. Are we in the land of, of our captivity? Right now, yes. Are we the only people on earth scattered by slave ships and still in the lands that we were scattered to even after slavery was declared to be over? Yes. 
Are we the only people that don't know our last name? Yes. I'm talking about on, on all of the earth. Now, there are people who change their name. You know, they say their last name is Netanyahu, but when you study it, you find out their last name is really Malakowski. <laughs> then you start saying, wait, hold on now, hold on now. You mean to tell me we don't know our last name? No, you don't. Do you know your language? No, you don't. You're speaking the slaver's language, English. A language that come up out of witchcraft. Where's your homeland? The average person said, I don't know. They just told us somewhere in Africa. Africa is a continent. Who were you serving before they, before they pushed these images on you? Uh, I don't, I'm over here. <laughs> you know what? We are the people of the book. And the Bible is trying to tell us that over and over and over again. And, and Zion on the Shabbat. As we wake up to this truth, and people say, well, well, man, I know you mention that all the time. Those of you who follow the ark, you need to understand something. Every week, a matter of fact, every time we go live or post a video, somebody's in the room for the first time. And you have to understand, Zion, those of you who've been in the room for years with the Moray, you got to understand that. You got to understand, for some people, this is the very first time they're even thought of who they are. Isaiah chapter 1 says, not only did the ox not know his, uh, that the ox know his owner and the donkey his master crib, but my people don't know. They don't even consider we, we need to realize that there are some people who never even really gave thought to, who am I? How did I get here? What language am I speaking? Is this my native tongue? Who are my ancestors? What do they believe? So yes, we take our little time and tell the whole world this every week. Our ancestors are Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We come up out the 12 tribes of Jacob, <clears throat> 12 tribes of one of Jacob's sons. Jacob had 12 sons that make up the 12 tribes. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. And one of those sons is your grandpa. <laughs> one of them sons is your grandfather. I'm talking about flesh and blood grandfather, not myth mythological grandfather, not I wish it was my grandfather. I'm talking about that's your blood. And many of us who got scattered in the, la in the slave trade, your grandfather most likely was Judah. So that is either Judah, Yehuda, or what you would say, Benjamin, because they were also primarily living in the, in the country of Judah. And of course we had uh, uh, Levi because everybody, every tribe was required to have the tribe of Levi among us, the Levites among us. So when I, when I mention those things, I'm, I'm trying to help the people who've been in the room for the first time go, wait, what? Oh yes, scattered all over the world through a slave trade that was predicted in scripture, prophesied in scripture. And we were warned that we were supposed to keep the laws, statutes, and the commandments of y'all so that we wouldn't fall off and end up in captivity. And we did break the laws and ended up in captivity. All right, so I wanted to get that out to the whole world. And it's good to see you all in the room. Y'all just don't know, what time is it? So, you know, we trying to start at eight o'clock. For 40-something minutes, the Moray 
have been trying to do something that only takes two minutes every time I get ready to go live. And that is simply pull up the program, click a button. Everything in the room is set up. Lights, cameras. The material that I'm going to bring forth, the music. And do you know I couldn't get online at home? <laughs> and I keep showing y'all. I know people say, Mama, you just talking. I wish I could bring this into the stream, but I can't because I don't want to mess up my script. You see that wire? That's a live wire that's plugged into my computer. <laughs> I'm not even, I'm not even uh, dealing with Wi-Fi. I'm plugged in with a hard wire straight to the computer. There it is. If I can get in there. Hold on. Put back in. Can you see? There it is. And some and somehow, some way. Man, every time. Uh, <laughs> but that's all right. We don't give up on the Shabbat. And that's why I played that song. Oh, by the way, that opening that opening song, Shabbat Shalom, you already know who that was, right? That's my sister. Anna Jack is putting in work for the kingdom and told our for her. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Um, and to the 12 tribes of Israel, I pray all is well where you are, Zion. And we give y'all praise for giving us, uh, waking us up on, on this holy Shabbat to have a mind to want to serve him. And today we are going to do something um, on this Shabbat that is going to be kind of unique because I'm going to read to Israel today. And I, I, you know how I am. I like, I, have, I got commentaries and a whole bunch of other things, but Today, as more, I would like to um <laughs> I, I, I want to be your I want to be a Bible reader to you today. I, I want to be a storyteller. I want to be a reader to Israel. And I want to read something to you that's in your Bible that most of you have never read. And if you have read it, you didn't read it with understanding. And I believe the Most High wants me to just focus on this today. And then we can talk about it later. <laughs> and believe me, all week long, Zion, I've been trying to figure out how I'm going to do this. And I, I, the, the way I feel I've been led to do it is to do it the way he told me to do it, even if it is unorthodox, to come in on a Shabbat and hear the Bible read to you. But that's what we're going to do. <laughs> hallelujah. 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 If you can see the Moray okay and you can hear the Moray all right, would you please do me a favor? Place the number seven in this chat, please. Let me just know that the broadcast is going out. Um, all morning long, they were telling me I couldn't access my camera, I couldn't access the microphone, and I was just about to go to to uh, to my phone. I said, We're gonna upload this on the phone. Oh, okay, number the seven is in here. And uh, I tried one more thing, you know, you run and say, Hey man, try this, let's try, let's start all over from the beginning from scratch. Turn off everything. Turn it back on, man. Give it a chance. I said, okay, let's try one more time. And hallelujah, hallelujah, because we didn't give up. We're live with you. And I see the sevens, all of you that's in the room, Toda Rabah. Um, we had a wonderful week of, of uh, messages that went forth. I pray that you all have been watching those. I have noticed, and I don't know if that's just a numbers thing that YouTube is doing, but I have noticed that the amount of people who watch the Shabbat messages versus the number of people who actually watch the the um, the messages during the week, the numbers are like really, really lopsided. So Zion, y'all need to let the Moray know if these weekly studies and these weekly messages are making a difference 
because obviously that's why we're doing it. If you want to watch them, if they're encouraging you, if they're helping you, please let us know. Because, of course, based on the feedback, it looks like, you know, people just want to be in the Shabbat. But if you if you enjoy those uploads and things, number one, always try to support the work of the art. But then, you know, you can let us know um, uh, that you do. And we really appreciate it so we can keep it going. And one way you can let us know is by watching them and by subscribing or sharing them so that the message can get out. Because we're doing some um, some different teachings on uh, how to raise kings and queens. And we're doing meditations and uh, and trying to do some current event things to, to let us see where we are in time. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. All right, it's been about the 15 minute mark. I see Z is in the room. I saw you Ron in the room. I think I've already saw uh, Hananiah Project Jazz in the room. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It means we can go forward. And as always, before we do that, Zion, we must, we must, we must hear the Shema on this holy Shabbat. Israel, Yahuwah, our Elohim is one Yahuwah, and thou shalt love Yahuwah thy Elohim with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hear, O Israel, Yahuwah our Elohim is one. I am I'm so grateful uh, to the Hananiah Project, Javon, and all, everybody who worked with that to put that out. Of course, our Shema is now worldwide. It's become our national anthem. And um, of course, Yah is still waking up um, people all over the world and they're learning the Shema. And of course, we, we give Yah praise for allowing our version of the Shema to relate to our people as we wake up, hallelujah. And um, I wanna also say this, do not underestimate your value and your worth to the kingdom, Zion. You, you have no idea when, how Yah is gonna use you. Every person that Yah is waking up in the last days have a part to play in the waking up of Israel to their identity and to the truth, and hopefully turning to who, to Yah, their Elohim. Um, you have a part to play, and your part you might think is small, but the body is made up of many parts, many members, and every member functioning properly is what makes the body healthy. So ask Abba Yah what it is he would have you to do. And then you need to do that. <laughs> Everybody has to play their part. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We've had a, a tremendous um, week of current events. And I just don't have time on today because like I said before, the most high has given me instructions on what to do today. I don't have time to go through, through them, but hallelujah, we survived another week in the valley of the shadow of death. Made it in the room, hallelujah. We, uh, Yah has continued to take care of us in the midst of this inflation that's gone crazy. We are also starting to see the effects of these last two years with all the things that they did to the population, from how they shot the population to how the, 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 the population was locked down, how the, the, we're starting to see the effects in the streets, in the workplace and in the schools. Be careful out there, Zion. We're dealing with a different creation, uh, a different creature now. And some of the things that are happening every day, and I'm not saying it always haven't been bad things, but crime is on the increase. And you can, and I don't, that's just not me. You can Google that. Crazy, outrageous, outlandish, weird crime is on the increase. Wars and rumors of wars. Beast Wars, and there's so many other things that's happening. I just don't have time. But the good news is, is that Yah will build a hedge of protection around you. I've said this in previous videos. Y'all should really hear them more right when I tell you this. By keeping the law, statutes, and the commandments and following the principles and precepts laid down in the Torah, which means you, you really have to learn them so that you can follow them, Yah will allow you in the midst of this judgment that's happening in the world, because it is a judgment. He will allow you to be encircled or circled with a hedge protected with a hedge so that wherever you are, you can experience Goshen in the midst of what? The land of our captivity. Wherever you are, he can create a Goshen. It doesn't matter. 
So whether you're in the country, whether you're in the city, whether you're in town, whether you're in the mountains, whether you're on the, in the valleys, if you're in the land of your captors, as we see this empire, because that's what it really is, as we see the empire not explode, implode, we are watching the crumbling of an empire. The European nation, and of course, um, America being Babylon, Sodom and Gomorrah and Egypt all combined, we are watching it unravel and it's Yah that's unraveling it. So the question is, what manner of man or what manner of woman ought we to be knowing that these things were prophesied that they had to come to pass. What's going to happen to you and me? I'll tell you what, if you keep these laws, these statutes and the commandments, and I'm not saying act like you're doing it. I'm saying do it. And watch him be a fence all around you every day. Watch him put food on your table. When you're hungry, watch him. Watch him. Watch him keep putting gas in your car, even though they run it up to seven hundred eighty-five dollars a gallon. <laughs> He'll do it. You're in Goshen, but he's gonna put a head of, hedge around you. Now look, you're gonna walk contrary to his law, statutes, and the commandments, and you wonder why things is going awry. Don't get mad at ya. No, we can't be wicked and expect the blessings of the Most High Yah. If we're going to be wicked and go along with the wickedness, then you will be punished with the wicked. And I'm going to say one more thing before we uh, pray and get into this message. Israel, 12 tribe descendants. Please hear the more. I'm talking about all 12 tribes now. Hear the more. You are living in the lands of your captors. They do not follow Torah. They follow Baal Astro. They follow Satan and doctrines of demons. I want you to get that. You're in a world where Satan and doctrines of demons and mammon and pleasure and all that become their God. We are not in a land that follows the, and teaches Torah. So therefore, we do not receive our living instructions from Babylon. Please hear the more, Ray. I'm going to try to help you. We, as a nation, do not kill our children. Period. More man, go man. No, 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 no. We don't, we don't put our babies through the fire. We don't kill our children as a form of birth control. Mm -mm. No, no, no. Not never. It is against the law of Yah for us to do it. And ooh, almost said some on the Shabbat. Hold yourself more, man. I don't give a dang what Babylon does. Babylon was built on child sacrifice. Babylon, the, this Babylonian system, this Sodom and Gomorrah and Egypt, they've been killing babies ever since they've been having babies. That's why Yah said, when you go over there, don't learn their ways. Because they do things, he said, that don't even come to my mind. 
And one of the things that don't come to his mind is passing children through the fire, which means simply this, killing children. We don't kill kids. We don't kill them when they're born. And we don't kill them when they're unborn. Life and death is up to Yah, not us. That's called murder. And I'm not getting no argument about circumstances right now. Because you and I both know that the overwhelming majority of the people wanting to kill children don't fall under the circumstances that they claim is the reason why they want to do it. And do I have to be the only Moray doing this? Do I have to be one of, one of the only Moray's telling the world this? That the majority of the killing that's going on in our community is a result of hoeing. Whores and whoremonging. Hoeing and whoremonging. Adulteries, fornications, and living wild and going against the commandments of the Most High and trying to cover up your sin with another sin, trying to break Torah by breaking Torah. You jumping out the frying pan into the fire and then want to claim, because right now they're trying to say that they're trying to make it racist. They're trying to say that it's going to hurt us if they take away the right to kill their babies. Could they, like, like the darkies, this is what they'll say, the blacks got to have that. The blacks have to have that. They're out of control. The blacks have to. And then they get all these black people. It's against the blacks. You know, we're poor and we're struggling. And how are we going to raise children? And how are we going to, we, we have to kill them. We have to be able to do it. And you got these seven budgets on the payrolls of the devil. Preachers and pastors and even some Israelites going along with Babylon. Not the more, not now, not never, not ever. Don't you fall for that okie doke. Babylon been doing that forever. One of the reasons, I'm going to read it today. One of the reasons that we ended up in captivity in the first place is because we started following after the, after the uh, satanic nations around us. And we went a whoring after other gods and begin to sacrifice to those gods. So no. And if, and if the more it could be used to make one of you Israelites rethink killing your child, and you decide, you know what, let me read the Bible and see if what more is saying is right. Because what I say don't matter, right? And if you read this Bible and find out it says thou shalt not murder, and then you keep reading and find out it also says that we don't, we don't definitely don't kill our children, then you might rethink it and give that Hebrew a chance to breathe oxygen outside the womb. Give that Hebrew a chance to give Abayah praise. Give that young Hebrew girl a chance to be a queen a scholar, an educator, whatever. Give that Hebrew boy a chance to be a king. Give them a chance to understand what it means to give Abba praise in their life. To be able to walk as the light of the world and the salt of the earth. Maybe one of the 144,000 preachers that's going to help us get out of trouble. Might be somebody that's going to read this Bible and be able to unravel the mysteries and help set us free. They might be able to read one of these songs and write something in the world they never heard before and change the whole world. And because our children are really our wealth, you have no idea 
that baby boy, baby girl could be the very person that Yah has designed to deliver you from your poverty. From your quote unquote ghetto. From your trials and tribulations. Might be the one that deliver your whole family. And you listen to this heathen who have no idea how we are wonderfully, how we are fearfully, wonderfully, I did a message on that earlier, May, you know, they don't know who we are. You, and this is not a message about that. This is, this is just trying to help Zion. That whole thing of killing children was to stop us from multiplying. It, it, it wasn't even designed for the heathen. It was designed for us, the children of Israel. When you go back and do that research, you're going to be like, boy, I can't believe I almost fell for the okie doke. Don't do it, Zion. And if you're in the room and you have fallen for it, you need to repent every day. And I'm talking about male and female. You better beg Abaya for mercies. You better memorize some of them songs David had to pray. Why? Because he don't, because y'all don't play that with his children. He said, my little children, my little ones behold my face all the time, every day. Whew. I got to say one more thing. I have to say this. Because I, I don't hear it being taught. And I don't hear it in Zion. Like everybody's scared to say something. So I got to say it. To our young men and our young women, listen to the more about this. And I got scripture, so I'll deal with it later. But for now, listen to what I'm going to tell you. The argument falls apart in several ways. The very first argument that is being put forth is, it's my body. That might be cool for the heathen, that ain't cool for you. Boy, what? I said, I didn't stop. That might be cool for the heathen. The European, the Babylonian, the Egyptian, the Sodom and Gomorrahites. But you and I are not like them. We don't put, we don't own our own body. He said we've been purchased with a price. Therefore, we are not our own. We belong to him. So the very first line in the lie is exposed and debunked among us. First time a person talk about this, my body. Then either you don't know who Yah is, or maybe you have not been bought with a price. Maybe you don't belong to him. Okay, then it's yours. Then do what you want to do. You do you. But if you know who you are and whose you are, you know you ain't your own. If you know that. And I'm only talking to the remnant. And when you know that, you know that if, if this body don't belong to you, then you can't do with it whatever you want. That's the first thing where it falls apart. And the second thing is, that baby's body, show sure enough, ain't your body. It's my body. Okay, first of all, that's a lie. Then the baby's body ain't yours either. And you read Torah long enough, you're going to find out that these children are the inheritance of Yah. Yah is bringing these kids into this world to know him and to honor and to fear him. 
And again, I'm not talking about extreme situations and circumstances. So don't try to put the Murray in that box. I'm talking about fornication, adultery, and hoeing. And y'all know exactly what I'm saying. Killing children as a form of birth control. You know what I'm talking about. Trying to play dumb with the Murray on the Shabbat. We being honest on the Holy Shabbat. The child is not yours either. That child is yours. He knew that baby before he even formed it in your belly. He said he set that child apart. That's why the child was given to you in the first place. Because you were supposed to, if it's if it's a situation that's quote unquote crazy. It was supposed to stop you from acting crazy after that. It was supposed to mature you. It was supposed to be your opportunity to find some type of grace, if you want to use that term, which is a wall of protection for the seed. It should have helped grow you up and turn you closer to Torah because now you see responsibility. Had nothing to do with now's an opportunity for you to choose to kill a baby. That's not why Yah allowed the pregnancy. He allowed the pregnancy to give you a chance to repent and to see what things look like from a parental view. Help us walk right, talk right. And some of y'all in the room right now with the more 550 people in the room. I'm going to be honest with you. I ain't trying to hurt nobody's feelings. You don't know how you got here. <laughs> you don't even know what y'all had to do to give you a chance to give him praise. Cause you wasn't there. You don't know what your mama and your daddy, your, your biological mama and your biological daddy was doing to get you here. You don't, you don't know what the system situation and circumstance was perfectly. You just know what they told you. But, but some of them say your, your parents made a choice. No, we're going to have this baby anyway. I said some of y'all, not all, some no, nope, I'm going to have this child. And by making that decision, they actually ended up giving birth to a child of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that would wake up to the truth of who they are and develop a relationship with Abaya. To walk in his presence, to feel his glory, to know him, to give him praise. Because that's what y'all doing when you come in the room. No, Zion. Let the world do whatever they want to do. Let these heathens march, yell, fuss, and cuss to kill babies. That's on them because their religion and their culture requires it. But in our, in our faith, in our culture, in the life of the Torah, we understand. But no, it's not what we do. I got a lot, I have so many um, examples of that, but for now, I ain't finna get into that. I think I made my point clear. And if y'all understood exactly what the Moray said, would you put a 100 in this chat, please? And then we're going to get to our reading on today. Put a 100 in this chat. You understood what I said? Because I didn't say all. I said some. And I want you to know that you in this old nasty Babylonian society, Egyptian society, Sodom and Gomorrah society. Yes, we are stuck here because of our sins. But we are not supposed to become partakers of their sin. Let them have that foolishness. And by the way, 
Where the big mamas at today? Hmm? Where the real grandpas today? Hmm? Where the uncles at? Real ones. Like Mordecai. Where the cousins at? To help take care of our children. Where's grandpa? Where's grandma? If mama need help. If daddy need help. Where's our cousins and uncles? Because back in the day, I'm old. I know that. I'm getting older. I get that. But back in the day, we helped each other. Raise our children. Back in the day. We didn't kill our kids. We called somebody and they helped us. Baby, come on on. Stay with us for a while. You're going to be staying with us. Come on in. There's your room right there. Mm -hmm. You ain't by yourself, honey. We're going to help you. I know everybody make mistakes, baby. But we're going to help you. You ain't not. You're going to have to go through this by yourself. What happened to that family? What happened to them houses? My house was one of the houses. We always had people in our house. My, my dad worked hard. My mama was eight of us, and we was always helping other people. Come on in. And some of them, some of those children from un unfortunate situations and circumstances will tell you right now, they're like family. Do you understand them already? I'm talking about real. When I think of the ones that was in our house that grew up, you know, not, not every day, but basically, you know, we helped. Everybody helped each other, right? When we see each other today, we don't even talk like friends. Way deeper than that. We all family. It's my brother. Whether I talk to him today in the barn, but ain't say, oh, that's my sister. Why? When we stayed together, they grew up in our house. I ain't gonna mention no name, put people on, but the ones that know we fit, we family, well, they are, of course, man, please. His daddy was like my daddy because I didn't know my father. Or the other way around, too. Their mama was my mama because my mama was gone. That happened in my house. I'm talking about what I grew And I got. Seven brothers and sisters, and they're all, hallelujah, still alive. If you ask any one of them, they'll say, oh, of course. More ain't lying. Well, what else they gonna do? What do you mean? We got family. We gonna raise our children like we're supposed to. And we ain't finna tie on them no scarlet letter, neither. How'd I get where over there? Oh, we can't do that and our king's getting ready to come back. And look, you might have to, anyway, we'll deal with that later. Do y'all understand what Amore is saying when I said where's our family at? Because if we're Israelites, then we gotta come together. And we gotta help each other, no matter what the situation is. Because if it had not been for Abaya having real chin, which is the word we use for grace, but creating a wall of protection, to keep, uh, keep us inside for the continuation of the seed, we would be just like everybody else. But we are not like everybody else. We have instructions in Torah. Now, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Let's support the work of the art if you can. Ask Abaya. Every week we give you an opportunity to give to share with the ministry because, as I mentioned before, I'm not just a Mori at the art. I'm full time working for the art. I'm full time doing this ministry. I don't have anything outside of focusing on this. 
to do, but to help you. And through this, help other people. I personally believe in the work of the Awakening Remnant Coalition. So I support it. I support other ministries. Why? Because I pray. And I ask Abaya, should I send some support here? And if he said, oh, yeah, definitely this young man or this young woman or this, this musician or this artist or this person would really appreciate some help, especially because they're trying to do that which is right in Torah. And then the second thing I always ask is, how much should I give? I pray about it. When he gives me the figure, I, I don't even argue no more. All right, when he gives me the figure, if I'm doing it on the computer, I just push in and I'm done. And I give y'all praise. Told everybody, y'all, for allowing me to be a blessing. And the reason why I can even be a blessing is because you all have been a blessing to me. <laughs> You're blessing the art so that the art can bless others. And I know that once you start sharing with the art, you actually will start seeing how you are being blessed in return. Most of you all also help other people. You know why? Because once you start that generosity thing, it's hard to stop it. <laughs> you see how you see how blessed you are when you become like the scripture says. It's more blessed to give than to receive. Now, let's listen to these 10 commandments. And when we get to that sixth commandment, you need to hear it. Yah commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear Yah, our Elohim, for our good always, that he might preserve us alive, as it is at this day. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before Yah, our Elohim, as he has commanded us. Praise you, Father Yah. I will not have any other Elohim before you, nor bow down to any graven images too. I will take the name of Yah, my Elohim, in vain. I'll do. Yeah. 
Hallelujah. 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 Those are our commandments. That's the way we are supposed to live our lives. Memorize them and then live accordingly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The name of our message today, going out worldwide, the song of Moses. This is our song of what? Salvation. Is what, Murray? It's our salvation song. Whew. Write that down. Somebody might even want to put that in the room. This is our salvation song. It's a song about how we will ultimately be rescued from the hands of all of our oppressors, everyone. It's our salvation song. It's about how we will be delivered and how the enemy will be destroyed. That's our song. And Zion, that is the real definition of salvation. Last week we talked about uh, um, Revelation chapter 15, right? And I, re and I revealed to you that before Yah begins to pour out these bowls of wrath that are filled to the top with the wrath of Yah, seven of them, and the wrath of Yah that's in the bowls have no mixture in them, which means for the first time, you get a chance to see pure wrath. It represents the vengeance of Yah that he is going to take upon those who mistreated us. It's going to be represented in, in seven bowls. And I mentioned that before he does that, he calls for us to sing. Mm. To do what, Mormon? What's in the Bible? And not only are we going to sing a song, we're going to sing an A and B selection. <laughs> I grew up in the Baptist church. Who we growing up is. We used to have all these meetings and church meetings and this and that. And, and choirs would come from all over. I don't even know where we got that term from. I just want to say thank you, praise the Lord. I want you to pray for me. I've been struggling with a cold all week. Are we going to ask the most high? No, they, they, that, they were saying that back in there. We're going to ask the Lord if you give me a chance mm, <clears throat> yeah, to kind of make it through this. And then everybody be like, all right, all right. <laughs> we're going to do an A and B selection. Before the preacher come. And then we'd be like, okay, well, let's hear it. And they talking all song. Then the music start playing. Boom. Then, you know, 
trouble in my way. Had to cry sometimes. So much trouble. Had to cry sometimes. You're like, what happened? I thought this person had a cold. I thought they was horse. <laughs> what happened? I was a still awake at night. Still awake. Ah! That's all right. <laughs> Why? <laughs> and that's what they, you know, A and B selection. That's all I'm just trying to. <laughs> some of y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Okay. So, before the judgment, we're going to do an A and a B selection. Last Shabbat, what did we do? We did the A selection. What was it called? The Lamb of Yah. Today, we're going to do the B selection. What's the B selection, Moray? The B selection is called Moses, the servant of Yah. Now, let's read this Bible. Revelation chapter 15, verse 1. And I saw another sign. Where? In heaven. I can't re-preach last week's lesson. I can't do that. I saw another sign. Where? In heaven. Where? In heaven. See, Earth don't have final say. And if I could get this over, I need to get this over to the awakening remnant. That Babylon don't have final say. The United Nations don't have final say. The Baptist don't got final say. The Kojic ain't got final say. The Apotalic does not. The cat o lick does not. Well, then who has final say? Ooh. Heaven got the final say. I told you, Daniel told Nebuchadnezzar. And Daniel's our cousin. He said, one thing you're going to have to learn, King, you don't rule. Heaven's rule. And I want to tell the whole world, all over the world, the remnant, Israel, Zion, it doesn't matter what it looks like down here. What matters is what it is like up there. You understand the more, right? If you do, please put a 500 in this chat. Please, I need it. I need y'all to understand that. That when you look at something from here, it looks one way. But if you were to do what John did and to go up there and look, you would be like, oh, man, they, this thing right here is going to play out like this, not like this. And 500 is rolling through here, too. So watch this. The beast does not win. The beast system does not win. The beast religion does not win. The, the uh, dragon that gives power to the beast does not win. The dragon that gives power to the religious system does not win. And the dragon, you know, is the devil that got kicked out of heaven. It looks like they're winning. But from the Shamaim down, he's like, no, nah, matter of fact, this is what he tells us. Watch this, Zion. I can't be with you all day. But watch this. Let me tell you something. The, the victory is over already. So therefore, he says, sing the victory song now. Huh? Yeah, 
didn't even point out the vowel. I know, but they're coming. I just want to hear the song. I want to hear my favorite A and B selection. Sing it now. Before I even start pouring out the vowel. Sing it now. It's over. Sing it right. Sing it now. Don't wait till the battle is over. Shout no. I'm trying to help somebody all over the world. This is my first point. This is the principle I want you to get in your head. You have to know Israel as you wake up. We don't have to wait until the end to begin to sing and to shout and give y'all praise. Because if you really read this book, you should know that if you are Zion and you're in the covenant, it doesn't matter your situation or circumstance. The only thing that matters is that we keep the laws, statutes, and the commandments wherever we are. He will create that bubble around us. He'll create that fence. And we're supposed to be doing what? Singing. Shouting and giving him praise. Maury, you don't understand my situation. I don't need to understand it perfectly. What I do need to know to understand is, are you Israel? Well, yes. Are you in the covenant? Why, yes. Are you following the laws and the statutes and the commandments? Yes. And what would you say your problem was? Man, I'm, I'm my rent. Oh, it, don't worry about it. What do you mean don't worry about it? How about this? Sing something. Sing the song of Moses. You already got it. Man, gas went up. That's your problem. That's your only problem. Gas went up. You need to be singing right now. Man, my family, man, we going through it. Are you Israel? Mm -hmm. Are you in the covenant? Mm -hmm. Are you trying to keep the law, statutes, and the commandments? Mm -hmm. Okay, y'all fix it. Sing a song. Maury, my tear, my pillows is stained with the midnight tears. The nights alone and dark. You don't understand, man, what I'm going through. I may not understand all of it, Israelite, but I do understand enough to know that your situation and your circumstance is not too big for our Elohim to handle. You can't look at your life just from the from the perspective of the <laughs> parameters that you've been placed in. That's not how you see. If we don't know any, if we haven't learned anything else from this book, we should learn that our perspective has to be from heaven. Because from the very beginning of this book to the end, what he does for Israel, he always does it from where? Heaven down. <laughs> He's always interfering with the heathens uh, uh, um, uh, and the sinners attack on us from where? Heaven down. Boy, I wish I had time to start bringing out illustrations, but I think y'all mind are running fast enough, Maury don't even have to do it. When he got ready to wreak havoc on the whole world, he told Noah, look, build an ark. And you and your family get in. I'm going to handle these heathens. I'm going to handle this wickedness, but you need to get in that ark. And I'm going to shut the door. Because I'm going to handle this from what? Heaven down. I'm going to do it. And we can leave that. We can go to Abraham. He said, man, I'm about to make a nation out of you. He's like, I don't see how. I'm old. My wife is old. He was like, oh, so now, now something's too hard for me, huh? Wow. Wow. I'll tell you what. When she does get pregnant at 90 years old and you're 100, name the boy Isaac. Everything in the Bible. I know. Now, now your mind is starting to move. You're starting to go, wait a minute. He does do that. Of course he does. You go through the whole Bible and you're like, 
every time he intervenes on our behalf, he intervenes from heaven down. The view that he sees, the vision, the place that he sits, he rules from there. He don't rule from this, this, this pitiful uh, plane that we're on right now. That's not the, nah, this the people plane? Are you serious? Man will make a plan and Yah will destroy that plan. He says, boy, they, you, you, but what's the key? The key is Israel. The key is you have to understand that you're in that covenant and you got to keep the commandments. That's the key. And I, I wasn't, this is not in my notes to say this, this part right here. This just came to me because I had a conversation earlier. Um, this was not in my notes, but I'm, I'm going to say it. The reason that Christianity and, and being raised in church, the reason why it didn't work, because remember, look at our society, look at the situation we're in right now, is obviously it didn't work. The reason why that religious system does not work is because it rejects the covenant, number one. And it says that the laws and the statutes and the commandments are done away with. So you're trying to get, you're trying to get the blessings. You're trying to get the protection. You're trying to get the fence. You're trying to get what you know is a part that you should get without the covenant and without the commandments. So you want prize with no precepts, huh? You want the cash with no commandments, huh? You 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 want to have shalom, but you don't want to keep the statutes. Is that what you're trying to tell me? No, it don't work like that. I... But every time you read scripture. And you see that there are examples of certain people who say, I know what it looks like here, but I'm going to keep doing this because of what Yah says here. You will see that's when what you and I call, that's when miracles, and I, 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 I just, I can't go deep into that right now. Just, just believe, you're going to have to believe the Bible right now. That's when you see the miracles of what you all call faith. Most people say, well, you know, the reason why the miracles happen because these people had faith, but you don't know that faith means they kept Torah. The word faith is connected to Torah. If them Hebrew boys would have been, would have been singing gangster rap and and, and and having Christmas trees and Easter egg hunts and their, and their wives would have been killing their babies and they fall into that fire and furnace, they're going to be burnt to a crisp. Do you understand me? If they'd have been talking about the law is done away with and I can believe any kind of way I want to believe and I can kneel down with my knee but not with my heart and then it got thrown in that fiery furnace. They would have, that's, whoo! Them would have been some burnt, up, bruised in that fire. They wouldn't have made it. How'd they make it, Murray? They knew Torah. They said, number one, we ain't even going to eat the king's meat. Hey, what do you mean you ain't going to eat the king's meat? No, we don't do swine and possible abomination. Now we ain't got no problem. We gotta we in captivity. We gotta go to work every day, but we're not gonna eat that meat. And then he's gonna say, Now I need you to bow down. He said, and we ain't been to bow down. Why? Because both of those things is against the commandments of the most high. Yeah, that's why they survived the furnace. If Daniel would not have been praying every day and keeping the law, statutes, and the commandments them lions would have been having Danny snacks. What'd you have? I had a little Daniel this morning, remember? 
some fibias and fibias. <laughs> but a Hebrew was, was 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 pretty tasty. Yes, the lions would have torn him asunder if he'd have gone in there talking about his kids going on an Easter egg hunt and he got to go get a Christmas tree and he going, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> if he'd have been like, oh yeah, the Shabbat is done away with and I can pray when I want to and I can do it. And if he would have had the same attitude and the same convictions that the average church person would have had, them lions would have been eating Danny snacks all night long. They'd have been calling their cubs here. Hey, y'all want some this this Hebrew? We got a little bit left. It's a little bit left over there. Y'all want some of him? Okay, Paul. We get... <laughs> but when but when he went in there as a as a keeper of the laws and the statutes of the commandments. What happened? Yeah, from heaven. That's my point. I'm trying to keep it. From the Shamayim. Yah then shut the mouths of the lion. What was missing in our religion, the religion of this, of this, of this, uh, of the heathen. That they gave us this perverted sense of the of the Torah and the text, they twisted it. They twisted it enough to keep us in a place where we didn't trust our King, and we didn't understand why things keep happening. And I'm, and and it's obvious why. Now, where did I get? Oh man, I got way over there talking about. So therefore, our attitude has to shift when it comes to giving Yah praise and singing songs to him. We don't praise him and sing to him, watch this, when we can see everything and know everything and understand everything. Uh-uh. We, we give him honor and praise and glory and we sing to him and we worship him, especially the tribe of Yehuda. We was called to do that before he even moves because we believe he's going to do it based on the covenant. So our praise is never based on situation and circumstance. Our praise is based on covenant always. And if I don't get off this subject right now, y'all going to start seeing me going to this praise thing and it's going to be, <laughs> we ain't going to finish. Whoa, we ain't going to finish. So let me, let me, let me move off the subject real quick. But if you understood that, would you put a 1,000 in this chat? We don't have to wait. One of some, matter of fact, if you be honest with me, some of your best praise of Yah, some of your, some of the best prayers you ever prayed, some of the most dedicated times you've ever had with the most high was when you was going through the worst times and trials in your life and you know it because <laughs> that's when you were serious and that's in our song it's our song of salvation and the way the 100 when the 1000 is going through here i believe i can continue And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues. For in them is filled up the wrath of Yah. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire. And them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over his number. They got the what? The victory. They got the what? The victory. No, everybody had to take the mark. Everybody had to take the number. Everybody had to take the name. Everybody. What? No, they did not. Wait till I get to that. Woo, when these vows pour out. Oh, We're going to talk about that. Don't fall for that okie doke. You do not have to bow down to the beast. You don't have to bow down to his image. You don't have to take his mark. You don't have to take the number of his name. You don't have to do none of that 
Why? You're in a covenant. Standing on the sea of glass, having the harps of Yah. And they sang the song of Moses, the servant of Yah. That's what we're going to sing today. That's what we're going to see today. And it says, and the song of the lamb. And we sang the song of the lamb last week. We're going to look at the song of Moses today. And the name of that song is actually Moses, the servant of Yah. And Zion, I need you to uh, get your Bible. You need to have your Bible because you need to read along. And it doesn't matter what translation you have right now. I'm going to be reading out of, out of the translation, which is a King James translation, right? But every now and then, I'm going to be putting in the right Hebrew words so that you guys can see um, what these words actually mean. You know, I'm going to try to help you see it. But if you can read Hebrew, then, of course, bring your Hebrew text out. That's the number one thing that you need. And uh, if you have a inter interlinear Bible, matter of fact, let me pull that one up now so that as we go through this, I can uh, I can highlight some things for you. So um, let's go to the book of Deuteronomy. Let's go to Deuteronomy. And believe it or not, believe it or not, I want to start at verse at chapter 30. The Mori, chapter 30. Mm -hmm. I want to start chapter 30. No, yes, I do. So get Deuteronomy 30. This is going to go out worldwide to the to, to 12 tribes of Israel that's been scattered. And I pray that a million or more, maybe two or three million people watch this because here is a song. It's a long song, but it was a song that you were supposed to be taught as a baby. You weren't supposed to know 15 minutes worth of rapping and snapping and lapping and clapping. You were supposed to know the Bible, but instead you grew up most of us grew up memorizing stuff that don't mean nothing and ain't worth nothing. The lyrics ain't worth the ink that you got to use to write the words down. And yet when it came to our laws, statutes, and the commandments and the songs that we were commanded to learn here in Babylon, we didn't even know we was given this song. And most of you in the room today you're going to see a song that you're going to wonder how you didn't know this and you went to church your whole life. Now, those of you who didn't go to church, I get it. The whole Bible is new to you. But for those of us who grew up in that religious system, to be able to know that this was here the whole time and it was never read or explained to us in a way that we could understand this is us and this is our song, you're going to be like, wow. So I'm telling you, before we read it, you're getting ready to hear your whole history. Wait, what? Before we read this psalm, the more is telling you. You're going to see the entire history of our nation from the time they left African Egypt until the time our Messiah returns to gather us from the nations where he scattered us. From one slavery to another, to the last, from the first captivity of our people to the last captivity of our people is in this book. And guess where it is? It's in Deuteronomy. And what's so interesting is it is the song that Yah commands us to sing before he pours out the vials on our last enemies. And then these pastors tell me, well, oh, tell me, oh, we, 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 we want to take a praise of the Lord, we want to take a praise of what Jesus did. And we no longer under them laws, the commandments, and we've been free to do the fuck about that. What Jesus we were, I know, we were old, tell me, oh, and you go, well, you do know that this song that we sing comes out of Deuteronomy, even though it's in John, in, in Revelation chapter 15, which is the last book of the Bible. This song is written in Deuteronomy. So how are we going to sing a song that's been done away with?
Let's read this song. The reason why I'm going to read the previous chapter, as I said before, this is going to be a unique study. Because today I just want to get it on record all over the world. I want our song on record so anywhere at any time anybody can pull this down, this video down, and at least begin to understand the song, why it was written, how it was written to us, about us, and maybe we can start listening to it, maybe learn it, maybe some of these musicians find a way to put it to music. Now, it, it's going to tell you when the song is going to start, but I'm going to give you the background in Deuteronomy chapter 30. Everybody get there and told our um for you all and uh, you administrators, you're going to be in, have to go to double work right now because <laughs> I know them trolls and all the, kick them to the moon. This ain't the time for foolishness. This is a time to hear Torah. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 1. Oh, my, my. And it shall come to pass, for when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse. What is he talking about? He's talking about the blessing and the curse that he has described to us in Deuteronomy chapter 27. 28, which is the one that everybody knows the most, Deuteronomy 28, it talks about the blessings and the cursings. It starts off, first 14 verses, I think, start off talking about the blessings. Then from verse 15, I think, to verse 68 is the curses. And then, of course, we know 68 is where we get the idea of the slave ships. And they're not, they're not barges, you lying. Oh, my goodness. These commentators can just, these are ships. And they're cargo ships. They're literally sailing cargo ships. And what were we taking in to our in, in into captivity? I had this slide I was going to put up earlier, but anyway, um, it talks about the slave trade and the cargo ships. They have every record. It's called the Atlantic slave trade in two minutes. Write this down or take a screenshot and watch that little video. Because right now there's a push even among people um, supposed to be woke talking about wasn't no such thing as no slave trade. Everybody was already here. There wasn't no ships. You're going to hell for that too. The Bible said we went in ships. And we did. I ain't saying some of us wasn't here. I'm saying... There's a whole lot of us got carried over on ships to fulfill the scripts. So that's for the blessing and the cursing. All right. Uh, which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among the nations. And I highlight this in my Bible. Watch. You're going to call them to mind among the nations, whether Yahuwah has driven thee. What? We just got out of Egypt. And you're talking about being driven into nations? Mm -hmm. And thou shalt return unto Yahuwah your Elohim and shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day. He said, he prophesied, I'll return too. And we already know based on the 28th verse, I mean the 68th verse of Deuteronomy 28, there won't be a man that's going to buy us. There will be Yah that will redeem us. And he's going to show us in this song. Now I'm going to keep reading a little faster. Uh, let's go to verse 2. And thou shalt return unto Yahuwah thy Elohim and shalt obey his voice according to all I command thee this day. And thy, thou and thy children with all thine heart and with all thy soul. Of course, what is that from? Our Shema. That then Yahuwah that then Yahuwah, thy Elohim, will turn thy captivity. In other words, you're going out of, you're getting out of captivity. You won't be, you won't be in your land of the captors no more. He's gonna turn it. Ooh, I gotta go faster, but watch this. These heathens lying on our Bible so much. 
You know what they try to say about Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68? When it says, and no man will buy you, do you know what they're saying? You know that they're trying to teach you? They're trying to teach you that the situation is going to be so bad, you're going to want to sell yourself into slavery. But nobody is going to want to buy you as a slave. That's their explanation for Deuteronomy 28. And they are going to hell for that. How can my curse be that I'm not going to be a slave? My curse is going to be I'm going to want to be a slave and I can't be one. I, I, I want to be a slave. I want to be sold to my enemies. I want to be sold to my captors, to my killers. I want to be sold to the ones that's going to rape my wives and my children and take my, take my life. I want to be sold to them as by men and by women. But my curse is I'm, they won't buy me. Nobody's going to buy me. So I guess I just have to be free. My curse is I'm a free man. I guess my curse is I have my own fig tree and my own vine, and I got to work my own fields. I guess that's a great, wow, that's a curse, man. I want to go into slavery so bad, but nobody wants to buy me. They're going to try to sell me, and nobody's going to buy me. Really? You all going to hell for that. The whole Bible talks about us going into a captivity, being bought like merchandise, sold for wine, sold, price of a dog. Y'all better go back and read your Bible. Sold to enemies into captivity. Children sold into captivity. That word is redeem, and everybody knows it as a Hebrew. All Hebrews know that you could redeem your relatives out of captivity once they were sold. And what he says, it ain't nobody going to redeem you. They cannot get you out. And that's why he warned us not to go the way of the heathen. He said, because y'all have no clue. So now when you get to chapter 30, because Deuteronomy don't stop at 28, when you go to chapter 30, what is he talking about here? Captivity. So how is it that we don't go into captivity in 28 because nobody wants us, but in verse in chapter 30, we in captivity? You see how these heathens, these heathens twist the scriptures, pervert the scripture so that they can't identify you and me. But that's all right. We woke now. We can see it. Let's read it. See, Yah has scattered us, according to uh, verse 1, into all the nations. And then he says, then Yahuwah will turn thy what? Captivity. Captivity. Oh, we would end up being captives. Yes, of course. It's part of the curse. And have compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all the nations where the Yahuwah has scattered. Who scattered us? Yah. So every time the more we get in, he said, to the 12 tribes of Israel that have been what? Scattered. Where do y'all think I got that from? I got that from the Bible. I got that from this verse. We've been scattered, just like he said. And guess where we are now? Scattered. And guess who's going to come get us? He will. If any man be driven out to the utmost parts of heaven, that means as far as under the heavens you can go. From this Yahuwah will gather thee, and from this he will fetch thee. Who will get you? Yah. Who will fetch you? Yah. And Yahuwah, your Elohim, will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possess, and thou shalt possess it. And he will do thee good, told, and multiply thee above thy fathers. And Yahuwah, thy Elohim, will circumcise thine heart. He said, yes. When it's all said and done, the remnant will have the heart circumcised. It's not an either or. Some people say, well, are you, is it the body or is it the heart? Well, if you're in the covenant, 
It should be your body and your heart. So coming out of captivity, Yah is going to circumcise the heart. That's Paul's whole argument in the New Testament. He took his argument about circumcision from this passage. That the greater circumcision, not that you shouldn't be circumcised. He's saying you can't make the circumcision of the flesh more important than the circumcision of the heart. Because it's a whole lot of Israelites going to be circumcised in the flesh and still go to hell. But when they come out of this last captivity that he is going to go back and get us, which is this one, we're going to circumcise the heart. Let's keep going, Maury. It's in the Bible. And Yahuwah thy Elohim will put all these curses upon thine enemies. Upon who? Oh, everything's going to fall upon them. On who? Oh, your enemies. What curses? Everything that I said that was going to come to you is going to come on them. You mean he's going to flip the table? Oh, for sure. He's going to flip the script? Oh, my goodness. You have no idea. Because he didn't mean for the heathen to take it that far. I've given you all these pictures a million times. He said he's going to put all them curses on, his, on the enemies and them that hate you. Who hates you? Everybody. Why do you think they don't want to give you no reparation? They broke as they can be. Talking about we ain't got no money, no money, no money. And then when the Ukraine, when they start to fight over there in the in, in Europe, the beasts fight among each other. All of a sudden, we can come up with, out of nowhere, we can come up with $100 billion. Because they're trying to show you every day that they hate you. And then that hate thee, which persecuted thee, the evidence is everywhere, the persecution we've been through. And thou shalt return and obey the voice of Yah. He said, but through it all, you're going to turn and start keeping the law, statutes, and the commandments. That's what we're doing. It's prophecy fulfilled. And to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day. And Yahuwah thy Elohim will make thee plenteous in every work of thine hand, in the fruit of thy body, in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy land for good. For Yahuwah will again rejoice over thee for good as he rejoiced over thy fathers. Hallelujah! If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of thy Elohim, of, of Yahuwah thy Elohim, keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in this book of the law, and if thou turn to Yahuwah thy Elohim with all thine heart, and with all thy soul. It's right in the Bible. How did we miss this growing up? How did you read that? Hearken to Yah, keep his commandments, and then let, let some, some preacher, pastor, teacher, Negro, bishop tell you the law done away with, and he said, no, you got to keep the commandment. No, I don't, you ain't got to keep the commandment. You got to follow his statutes. No, no, I ain't got to follow them. Okay, well, then you're going to stay in the situation. You're going to stay in the situation that you are. You're going to have to turn. Let's keep going. For this commandment, which I command thee this day, is it not, it is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. For it is not in heaven that thou shouldest say, who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us that we may hear it and to do it he says, now, don't try to act like you can't hear this Bible and this commandment. Like, oh, man, that's just way too high for me. Yeah, no, it's not. Paul echoes this in, in, um, in uh, Romans chapter 10, by the way. He's talking about salvation. Verse 13. Neither is it beyond the sea that thou shouldest say, who will go over the sea for us and bring it unto us? that we may hear it and do it. He said, man, but it's so far. We can't know the law of the commandments, man. Who going to go? Man, no, 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 no. Stop that too. Why? He said, because the word is very nigh unto thee. He said, because Yah is going to bring the word right to your face. That's what Paul was preaching when he was in his, in his obviously, Hebraic mind 
the word of Yah, which is the salvation of Yah, is obviously Hamashiach because Hamashiach is the word of Yah made flesh. But the word of Yah is very nigh unto thee in thy mouth and in thy heart. That what? Thou mayest do it. It's exactly what Paul was saying. So for you talking about Paul gave us salvation in the New Testament, Romans chapter 10. No, Paul is echoing what Moses wrote about how we are saved. And he said, don't be talking about who going to go up there. Why? Because that's exactly what Moses is saying. You know, <laughs> oh my goodness. See, I, verse 15, see, I have set before thee this day life and good, death and evil. He said, you got a choice. In that I commanded thee this day to love Yahuwah thy Elohim and to walk in his ways. Then we're going to get that over and over again. And to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments that thou mayest live and multiply. And Yahuwah thy Elohim shall bless thee in the land whether thou goest to possess it. Verse 17. But if thine heart turn away so that thou will not hear, but thou shalt be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them. Oh, so you're going to tell it loud done away with and bow down to these other gods, huh? I denounce unto you this day that you shall surely perish and that you shall not prolong your days upon the land for that thou passest over Jordan to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, you Israelites. That both you and your children, seed, may live. That thou mayest love Yahuwah, thy Elohim. And that thou mayest obey his voice. And that thou mayest cleave unto him. For he is thy life. Who is He's the life and the length of days, the length of thy days, and thou mayest dwell in the land which Yahuwah swore unto the father, unto thy father, to your father. Who's my father? Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob to give them. Verse chapter 31, and Moses went and spake all these words to the children of Israel. And he said unto them, I'm 120 years old this day. Oh, all you ain't no birthdays in the Bible. He said, I'm 120 years old today. <laughs> I just made my 120th year today. Tell Moses. Dispel all the lies and the false doctrines in Israel. You got some crowds out there. I had a person I had people leave our congregation and our fellowship because I told them, Yah allows us to count our days. The cycle of life, the yearly cycle, the week cycle, the month cycle, the year cycle, celebration of our days are not satanic unless you turn it satanic. Moses said, I know how old I am today. Today is my, tw my 120th birthday. Teach the world, Moray. Somebody got to do it. And he said, and I can't, I can't go no more out and come in. No, this is it for me. This is it. Also, Yah has shown unto me that I can't go over this Jordan. How come? Yahuwah thy Elohim, he'll go over before thee and he'll destroy the nations from before thee. Again, the battle is won before they even get there. He says, Yah's going to do this even before you go. Just know that. It's the same picture in the Revelation. I'm just, I'm just setting the scene for you. He said he's going to destroy the nations from before thee, and thou shalt possess them. And now watch this. This is so powerful right here. And Yahushua, 
And who? And Yehoshua. No, I'm going to say Joshua. I know I said Joshua in English. But you do know that his name literally is Yahoshua. Yahoshua. So you can see the symbolism, right, in the name. Because Yahoshua and Joshua, they're, both of their names mean Yah is salvation. So what is he saying here? He's saying, I, Moshe, I can't get you across. I wish I could. Well, Moshe, what happened? I'll tell you in a minute. <laughs> but for now, just understand, Joshua, Yahoshua, he shall go before thee as Yahuwah has said. And Yahuwah shall do unto them as he did to Sion, to all the kings of the Amorites, unto the land of them whom he destroyed. And Yahuwah shall give them up before your face that you may do unto them according to all the commandments which I have commanded you. Verse 6, be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. Wait, fear not, don't be afraid of them. You heard me. For Yahuwah, your Elohim, it he it is that doth go with you. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. What? We had a song growing up that he can't fail. He won't fail. He can't fail. <laughs> How do we forget that? And Moses called unto Yehoshua and said unto him, in the sight of all the Israel, be strong and of good courage, for thou must go with this people unto the land which Yahuwah has sworn unto their fathers to give them and thou shalt call them to inherit it. And Yahuwah, he it is that shall go before thee. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. Fear not, neither be dismayed. And Moshe wrote this law and delivered it unto the priest. Oh, he gave it to the priest, did he? Yes, the preachers. And the sons of Levi, which bear the ark of the covenant of Yahuwah and the elders of Israel and unto all the elders of Israel. And Moses commanded them saying, at the end of every seven years in the solemnity of the year of release in the feast of tabernacle, when all Israel, when who? All Israel, when who? All Israel has come to appear before Yahuwah thy Elohim in the place which he shall choose. Thou shalt read this book. Do what? Read it. And what happened? Stop reading it. Why? Because somebody told us the law and the prophets had done away with it. We're supposed to read this every year. The law before Israel, all Israel in their hearing. Gather the people together. Who? Men and women and children. Men, women, and children. I thought only the men. He said, no, you didn't hear what I said. He said, every seven years when we get together, y'all know what year it is. Everybody get together. We got to make sure we all on what? The same page. That we're doing what? Saying the same thing. Get, and the stranger that is within thy gate that they may hear and that they may learn and fear Yahuwah your Elohim and observe to do all the words of this law. You better tell everybody. And that their children which have not known anything <laughs> may hear and learn to fear. That's why I always tell the heathen, you welcome in this room. I ain't mad at you. I just know that you weren't taught anything. You were given doctrines that were made up of people who were deceived or trying to deceive. The Bible says in the last days, you got to be careful. He said, because, because of lawlessness, you're going to get doctrines of devils. Let me continue. And that their children which have known, which have not known anything may hear and learn to fear Yahuwah 
your Elohim as long as you live in the land, whether you go over Jordan to possess it. And Yahuwah said to Moshe, verse 14, behold, the days approach that thou must die. Call Yahushua and present yourself in the tabernacle of the congregation that I might give him a charge. Yes, we're going to pass the mantle. And Moshe and Joshua went in and presented themselves in the tabernacle of the congregation. And Yahuwah appeared in the tabernacle in a pillar of a cloud. Who was that then? Who appeared, you non-messianic maniacs, in this cloud? Who appeared in the pillar of cloud? And the pillar stood in the cloud. And the pillar of the cloud stood over the door of the tabernacle. None other than the true Hamashiach, Yahushua, Hamashiach. None other. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Behold, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, and this people will rise up and go a whoring after other gods. They'll do what? He said, listen, man. You're about to die. He said, yeah, I figured that. And I got some bad news. What's that? When you're dead, these people right here, if in a go horn after the after strange gods. No. After getting them out of Egypt, water from a rock, turning bitter water sweet. Well, landing so close, they just had to grab a stick and eat. Shoes never wearing out. Enemies destroyed. They're going to go home. Hate to give you that news, Moses, but I know the future. Let me dressing up the kids like leprechauns on St. Patrick's Day. I'm going on Easter egg hunts, Christmas trees. They're going to be killing babies. The men will be dressing like women, and people will think that they're religious. The women will be dressing like men, and there will be some of them don't know what they are. But they all have one thing in common. They will be going a whoring. <sighs> After other gods of the strangers in the land, whether they go to be among them and they will forsake me. What? Mm -hmm. And do what? Break my covenant, which I made with them. Verse 17, then my anger shall be kindled against them in that day. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna let that slide. I don't be upset. My anger will be, my anger gonna be hot. And I will forsake them. Who? Israel. And I'll hide my face from them. People keep saying, so where was he during slavery? Where was, they this, They use the word God. Where was God during the persecution? Where was God when they was, the, where was God? Where was God? Hiding his face. You ain't gotta, listen Zion, you don't have to argue with these naysayers and these skeptics and these slumber brews. Learn your Bible so you can answer them with one quick answer. Where was God during slavery? Hiding his face from you. Where was he during the time he was just hiding? Where, where was he we hiding? Why? Because you forsook the law, statutes, and commandments. Show me that in the Bible. And then take them right here. And they shall, and they shall be devoured. Who? Israel. It, it's uh, unbelievable, don't it? and many evils and trouble shall befall them so that they will say in that day, are not these evils come upon us because our Elohim is not among us? 
and I will surely hide my face in that day for all the evils which they shall have wrought Ooh, in that day that they are turned into other gods. Now, verse 19. Now, therefore, write this psalm. Do what? Maury, did you read all that to get here? Yes, I did. Because this is the same song that he's going to tell us to sing in Revelation. He taught him to write it in, the, in Deuteronomy. If y'all understood what the Maury is saying, and I tried to make it as plain as day and as crystal clear as I possibly could, would you put a 500,000 in here? That I laid down the foundation so that you could see it was Hamashiach who gave Moses the song, and then he expect us to know the song by the time he get back. And most of us don't have never even heard it. He said, now write this song for you and teach it to the children of Israel. Put this song in their mouth that this song may be a witness for me against the children of Israel. For when I shall have brought them into the land which I swore unto their fathers that floweth with milk and honey, and they shall have eaten and filled themselves and waxen fat. Wait, what? Oh, yes. I'm getting ready to bring them into the land. I'm going to do everything. And you ain't going to believe this. Once they get full, they're going to have honey. They're going to be eating and, and, and going to get fat. They're going to turn to other gods. No. Yes. And serve them. And provoke me. And break my covenant. They're going to break your covenant. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass when many evils and troubles are befallen them. How many? Many evils and troubles are befallen them. How many? Many evils. When you look at the plight of our people, what do you see? Many evils and troubles befallen us that this song shall testify against them as a witness for it shall not be forgotten out of their mouths of their seed what they're not supposed to ever forget this song and let me tell you what's interesting is on today the song is being put back in the mouths of his children. Because I'm one of the more raised that's doing it. So the forgetting, the forgetting the, of the song, the forgetting of the song because of our captivity, right? He said, but that's gonna, they ain't going to forget my song. In other words, ultimately, the song coming back. I'm going to bring it back. And how is he doing it? Right now, one through the more, you get it now. And I'm not the only one. Again, the fulfillment of prophecy. Hmm. For I know their imagination, which they go about even now before I have brought them into the land, which I swear. Moses therefore wrote this song the same day. He wrote it when? The same day. He wrote the song on his birthday? Mm-hmm. The same day y'all said write it, he wrote it. And taught it to the children of Israel. What are we doing right now? For the teacher to the children of Israel. And he gave Joshua, the son of Nun, a charge. That's a whole nother thing. That noon is a, is a seed. It's a noon seed, activity, life. The seed of the woman. I could go on and on with that. It's a picture of your whole shoe. Anyway, a charge. Be strong and of good courage. For thou shalt bring the children of Israel into the land, which I swore unto them, and I'll be with thee. Verse 24. And it came to pass when Moses made an end of the writing of the words of the book of the law until they were finished. 
that Moshe commanded the Levites, which bear the Ark of the Covenant, saying, uh, of the of Yahuwah, saying, take this book of the law and put it in the side of the Ark of the Covenant of Yahuwah, your Elohim, that it may be there for a witness against thee. We're supposed to have this. And he gave it to the preachers. And it's, for, it's unfortunate that it's weird that the preachers are the one telling you that it, it's done away with today. Strange, ain't it? For I know thy rebellion and thy stiff neck. Behold, while I am yet alive with you this day, you have been rebellious against Yahuwah. Even, even while I've been alive, you've been rebellious. And how much more after my death? Gather unto me all the elders of your tribes and your officers that I might speak these words in their ears. Let me talk to them. Every one of them. Bring them here. And I'll call heaven and earth to record against them. For I know that after my death, you will utterly corrupt yourselves. How do you know that, Moses? He said, because y'all just told me earlier today. <laughs> Y'all just told me earlier today that when I'm dead and gone, y'all been to go buck wild and be and corrupt yourself. Let me get some water. And because y'all's word is true, that's gonna happen. And did it happen? Of course it did. Let's keep going. And turn aside from the way which I have commanded you. And evil will befall you in the la in the what day? Latter days. Everybody write that in the text. So if a person stays in this room this long, they're gonna say, "What's all these words? Latter day." Write that in the chat. In the chat. Why? I need you to see something clear as bell as a bell. He's gonna tell our whole history in the song. That's why we were supposed to memorize it. These are the latter days. And every time we read a prophet from now on, that light should turn on. Every time he say in the latter days. So, you know, of course, after Moshe, we're going to get other prophets. They're going to talk about the latter day. King Dawid, which is King David, for those of you who don't speak Hebrew, he's going to talk about latter days, the end days, the, the end of time. You're going to get it from Isaiah. Talk about in the last days. And then you're going to get Jeremiah. But in the last days. And then Ezekiel, but in the last days. And then, of course, Daniel does his whole thing about the latter days, the last days. So when you, you leave Daniel and then you get to Hosea, he's going to talk about the last days. And then when you open the book of Joel, it talks about today's day. And then in the book of Joel, he's going to say, but in the last days. When you deal with Amos. And then, of course, we know Obadiah, he's going to deal with the fall of Edom. When? In the last days. He's going to go. And you go on and on, right, until you understand that the whole book is now going to start focusing on, the whole Bible is going to start focusing on the situation that's going to befall us in the last days. That when we look at the condition of Israel in the last days, which are these days, you will know that the, the, un, the identification of Israel will never be mistaken again because the true identity of Israel will show up in the last days based on the condition of Israel. We'll befall you in the latter days. Why is evil going to befall us in the latter days? Because you will do evil in the sight of Yahuwah to provoke him to anger through the work of your hands. And Moshe spake in the ears of the congregation of Israel the words of this song until they were ended. Now, I want you to know something. Once again, the heathen don't know how to divide our scriptures. So let the Mori help you. There should be an end when he says, through the work of your hands, that should be the end of chapter 31. Chapter 32 should start with verse 30. Verse 30 of chapter 31 and verse one of chapter 32 should be together. 
And if you read the text again with new eyes, you're going to see it. We had to take our Bible back from the heathen and fix it. They don't even know how to properly divide trends, trends of thought. That's if you're going to start new chapters, you're going to have to, you should be dealing with the trend of thought, right? So let the mom already do it. I'll do it. I ain't got no problem. It should start right here. And Moses spake in the ears of the congregation. Why? Because if you go to uh, chapter 31, verse 25, it says, and Moses commanded the Levites. That's one thought. We get down to verse 30, he's, uh, it, we go into a different thought. And Moses spoke in the ears of all the congregation. The words of this song until they were ended. So what? He's going to give them the song now. Give ear, oh heavens, and I will speak. We're in the song. If everybody can clearly see that we are now in the song that we need to know, and I, I'm looking at the time. We got bonus time today. That's all right. We're going to get through this one. If you can clearly see that, put an 800,000. We're working our way to the end. If you can clearly see that now we're in the song, we see the prophecy concerning our people that we would eventually end up in captivity. We see why. We see the prophecy concerning we're going to turn against the laws of Moses, and we did. We saw that we were going to be scattered. We saw that we we're going to be captive. We saw that we we're going to return. We saw Moses couldn't get into the land, but we also see that, that Joshua is going to take us over, which is a picture of Yehoshua taking us into the true promised land. It's, it's, it's so powerful. And now we're in the song. In most Bibles, which is, this is interesting, in most Bibles, you're going to get a heading. <laughs> we never even knew what these headings were for, but look, what does the heading of that say? Moses song. See, that's why y'all came in the room today. This is the reason I asked for Israel to support the work of the ark. Doing, digging, researching. Right here. And they sang the song of Moses. Right here, verse three. And they sing the song of Moses. Then you go to Deuteronomy, chapter 32, and it says, Moses' song. <laughs> Can you, you see what I'm saying? Maury, how you see that, man? What do you mean? I just read the Bible over and over and over again. And I asked Abayah to tell me what he want me to tell Zion. But you don't know Moses' song if you say the Old Testament didn't done away with. But the term Moses' song is the title of his song. The title of this song is Moses, the servant of Yah. That's the title of the song. That's the B selection in the A and B selection or A selection, really, whichever way you want to put it. But that's the title. So since that's the title of the song, we're going to say, hey, maybe we should read the song. Or maybe we should sing the song. It's right there in your Bible. In my Bible, they literally wrote Moses' song. Whew. All right, let me go ahead. Here's the song. Give ear, O heaven, and I will speak. I was going to play music and, and do this at the same time. I was. But it was hard for me to keep my place and to play at the same time. So I had to choose one or the other. So I said, maybe I'll just read it to Zion. But I thought about, can I play the bass and, and read this? I'm like, I don't know if I can do that. I'm like, can I play the piano and read this at the same time? So 
maybe I'll have to just come up with some music on a loop or something and then just play it. But anyway, it should be put to music. Here, er, here, oh, wait, start from number one. Give ear, oh, you heavens, and I will speak. And hear, oh, earth, the words of my mouth, my doctrine. <laughs> I almost want to do a beat. My doctrine shall drop as rain. What? You got people out here talking about that the lyrics is, 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 is dripping from their lips. It's all right. I got the drip. Don't even know where they got it from. Have no idea that the DNA of the covenant runs through their, runs through their system. So when they even say words like the lyrics is dripping from my lips. They think they got that on their own. No, you didn't get that on your own. What's supposed to be dripping? You talking about I got to drip. What's supposed to be dripping? That ain't supposed to be no sexual thing. What's supposed to be dripping from your lips is the song of Moses. Doctrine is supposed to be dripping from our mouths. The laws, the statutes, the commandments, his praise, his song, worship. I'm not supposed to pervert that into what y'all pervert. What? Ooh. Continue, Moray. Verse two. My doctrine shall drop like the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew. As the small rain upon, upon the tender earth. And as the showers upon the grass. That sound like dripping to me. That sound like he about to flow. He like, y'all better hear this flow. Because I will publish the name of Yahuwah. Oh, no, they hit it with the Lord. He said, no, I'm going to publish the name of Yah. Ascribe you greatness unto our Elohim. Why? Because he's a rock. Uh, see how it go? Mm, it's the music. He's what? He's the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment. A Elohim of truth and without iniquity. Just and right is he. He's the rock. Talk Moses. Moses, let me rap to y'all because you don't have to remember this one. For they have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of his children. In other way, in other words, the world, the way y'all acting and the way you look, that's not the way I, I'm not the way y'all's children look. I'm not the way we behave. That culture that y'all done picked up on, I don't know where y'all got that from. It ain't us. It ain't the spot of the children. They are a perverse and crooked generation. Oh, they don't want crooked. Who is real? Do you thus, that word requite, King James, let me flip it for you. Let me fix it for you. Do you repay y'all that way? Is that how you're going to repay him for getting you out of Egyptian captivity? Is that how you're going to repay him for the manna? Is that how you're going to repay him for the clear, clean water? Is that how you're going to repay him, you old foolish people and unwise, for everything that he's done? for bringing us out, for making a way out of no way, for crossing over the Red Sea. If this is how you're going to repay him. By getting the spots and wrinkles of the nations around you. Foolish and unwise. Is it not thy father that hath begotten thee? Hath he not made thee and established thee? He said, y'all don't look nothing like your foreparents. You know that, right? You starting to resemble somebody else. That ain't Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Remember the days of old. Oh, it's a beautiful song. Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he'll show you, thy elders, and they will tell thee. 
when the Most High divided the nations, their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the numbers of the children of Israel. In other words, he made it to where? Way back then, he had a place for us. Hallelujah. For Yahuwah's portion, that means his lot, his possession, is his people. That's the portion he kept. When the whole world was put in their place, he said, but I, I'm going, I want Israel. They're mine. For Yah's portion is his people. Who? Jacob. You, Israel. You are the lot of his inheritance. You are his allotment. <laughs> what are you talking about, boy? Right? Yes, you're his. It's covenant. He found them in a desert land. Oh, that's where we was. In a waste and howling wilderness. He led them about and instructed them. Oh, yes. Learn this song. Learn this song. He kept him at the apple of his eye. In other words, he protected them. Like a person protects the very center of his eyeball. The idea is you're going to protect your eye. I've got my eye on them. I'm watching them and I'm protecting them just like an eyelid. In other words, I'm there for. As an eagle stirred up her nest, preach, and fluttered over her young, spreadeth about her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings. What? You heard me. Like an eagle stirs a nest. Oh, that's a whole sermon. I can't do it right now. So Yah did lead him. And there was no strange gods. There was no Baal and Astaroth, Santa Claus and Easter. No bunnies and none of that stuff with him. He made him ride on high places of the earth that he might eat the increase of the field. And he made him suck honey out of the rock and oil out of the flinty rock. What does that mean? He said, man, Yah was so kind to Israel. The rocky places grew trees that the bees could come in and produce, uh, put up the beehive, and it was enough pollen that all you had to go is go up to the rocks and you could literally get honey. That's how Yah set us up in the land. That's how Yah went ahead of us and prepared a place for us. That's why they call it the land of what? Milk and the honey. Let's read and see if, I'm, see if the more we tell the truth. Butter. Verse 14. So in verse 13, honey. In verse 14, butter of kind. What does that mean? He made butter from the cows, from the cattle. And milk of sheep. Oh, that's lamb's milk. That's sheep milk. And the fat of lambs. And rams of the breed of Bashan. And goats with the fat of kidneys of wheat. In other words, these goats are not just, they're not just fed with just wild grass. Yeah, no, no, no. I set up Israel so, I set Israel up so right that they had enough wheat left over to feed the goats with it. And the goats got fat too. And what else? And not only did they get, did I set them up with honey from a rock, oil, that's olive oils from the olive trees, from flinty rocks. I got a milk uh, from the cattle, I mean butter from the cattle, milk from the sheep, fat of the fat with the fat of lambs, rams, uh, of the breed of Bashan and goats with the fat. He said, all that, and on top of that, 
They ate, they drank the pure blood of the grape. The what? They had their own wine. I set Israel up perfectly in the perfect land. Remember, they're not even here yet. But the song is about how Yah set them up here. And when we look at the scripture and we actually go into the land to see it, it's like he said it was. Verse 15. But Jeshurun, who is that? <laughs> That's Israel, y'all. Just write that down. But Israel, the children of Israel, wax fat. They did what? They got full. They got fat. And then what? They kicked Yah. No. He brought him out. Mm -hmm. He split the reed sea. Mm -hmm. He killed Pharaoh and his army. Mm -hmm. He defeated the Amorites and the Amalekites. Mm -hmm. He made it to where their shoes never wore out in the wilderness. They got bread in them every morning. Mm -hmm. Ah! He watched over them. Uh, like an eagle. Yes. They were the apple of his eye. Yes. He defeated all the enemies. Yes. He set it up to where when they got in the land, in the rocky places, they can get honey. Yeah. And out of Flint Rock, they was getting olive oil. Mm -hmm. They could get butter from the cattle. Yes. They were getting milk from the sheep. Yes. Their goats were being fed with precious grains. Yes. They were full. Yes. Satisfied. Yes. The next verses say, and they praised Yah, kept his laws, statutes, and commandments forever and ever. Hallelujah. That's what it should say. But the song said, no, what happened? They said, after all of that, they kicked Yah. They kicked at him. They did what? They kicked at him. We don't like you. We don't want you. Leave us alone. They did what? They kicked. Thou art waxing fat. Thou art grown thick. In other words, now your head, you are, you thick headed. Thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook Elohim, which made him. And lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. Do you see the song now? He is the rock. That's the, that's the hook. But then when you get to this part, he said, but they lightly esteemed the rock. They didn't like the rock. They ignored the rock. They got over there and said, we don't need him no more. They kicked at him. The rock of their Yehoshua. The rock of his salvation. What else did they do? They provoked him to jealousy. No. Yes, yeah, in the song. How did he get jealous? Because they kept going out with strange gods. After all, he had done for them. Soon as somebody come by talking about Christmas, they gone. Soon as somebody talking about Easter, they gone. Somebody talk about some European is the baby white Jesus made in the image. They gone. It don't take nothing. I got one of the one of the letters, and I get a lot of letters and a lot of emails. One I got one the other day. And I normally don't get hurt. 
But this letter hurt me so bad, I could not. Matter of fact, I'm preaching right now and it's still in my heart. This is a letter that came from who I consider a friend. And when I say friend, I mean a friend. We done ate at the same table. We done been to feast days together. We done been in Bible studies together. He been over my house. This is a friend and he's older. He wrote me a letter and this is what he basically said. He said, I've been under your ministry and listening to your teaching and supporting you for a long time. But I feel like, I'm paraphrasing, that as an Israelite, when it comes to church, you throwing the baby out with the bathwater, and therefore I'm going back to church. I'm going to move my support to this local pastor. I'm going back because I don't think there's nothing really wrong. And he's old. How do you get old and get that close to the very end of the day of judgment and say, I got to go back? And the Most High told me, he said, Lot's wife did the same thing. Almost free, almost out. You, you, you like one half a day's journey to escaping the wrath of Yah. And you turn and look back, we way too close to turn around and learn. You going back to Babylon. You going back to the whore. You going back to the beast. You say there's some good in the beast. So let me go back to the beast. I don't want to be walking with the Israelites, the awakening remnant, the coalition no more. What I need now is I'm going back to the beast. I've had a lot of letters, but that letter bothered me. One, his age. To go to hell as an old man is just, I, I couldn't take that. And number two, the fact that the Bible says you can't wake up and taste the truth about Yah, according to the Hebraic text, and turn back. He said, because if you do, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin, and you will be counted as one who has trampled the blood of Hamashiach, which is the blood of the covenant, under your feet. I'm, I'm, I'm shifting my, my support back to church. And, I'm, and believe me, he didn't have to write me that letter. And I'm not dealing with, because y'all know uh, as a Maury, I have never, ever talked about amounts of money. So whether amount was large or whether his amount is very small is irrelevant to me. I'm not supporting Babylon with a nickel, a penny, when I know the truth about what they've done. And he know the truth because he's been in this ministry now, I know at least four or five years, maybe more. He said, you're throwing out the baby with the bath water. I said, who's the baby? What am I throwing out? Babylon is the baby? Solomon Gamal, I'm throwing that out. Christianity is the baby. What are you talking about? It made no sense at all. I pray for his soul. Why? Because it says once Israel get comfortable, once they get to a place, man, where they can eat now and drink now and they get a little something, you know, when they were struggling and looking for something, Oh, yeah, they try to live right. But now they get a little comfortable. <laughs> I don't see nothing too much wrong with the, with the Christian church. Oh, you because you see what in there? Advancement, comfort. Because a lot of Israelites watching me right now, the devil is going to always try to pull you back. Just like Israel, Moses already told us to learn this song. So when stuff like this happened, we would just be like, well, he said it was going to happen. So you're going to provoke him to jealousy with these strange gods, with abominations. So you're going back to what? Lobsters and shrimps and roaches? 
mice, dog, and the abominations they uh, and with abominations provoke they him to anger. Verse 17, they sacrifice unto devils. To who? That's what the killing of the babies is all about. Tell me the truth. Not to Yah, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Man, our forebears didn't give a woo! Look, look, European man made religion of the beast that twists our scripts. Of the rock that begot thee, thou art unmindful, and hath forgotten the Elohim that formed thee. You know what you said? I'm done with that. You see the rock again? Now you can do what? Hear the song. See, as the Mori is reading the text, now you see the hooks to the song. A hook means the thing that's supposed to keep your attention, right? Now you see the, the pattern. Um, you can see the verses and you can see the words that keep coming up over and over again because this literally was a song. Moses was a songwriter. Of the rock that begot thee, for, uh, of the rock that begot thee, thou art unmindful and hast forgotten the Elohim that formed thee. Verse 19. And when Yah saw it, he abhorred them. He did what? He abhorred them like, I can't do you no more. Really? Mm -hmm. Why? Because of the provoking of his sons and his daughters. And he said, I'll hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. Let me move out the picture for a minute and let's see what happened to y'all. Why? Because everybody hates you. So all y'all have to do is say, I'm just not going to do something for a while. Let's for a little while and see what happens to them people. And y'all already know, because we've lived this history already. For they are a very forward generation, children in whom is no faith. And remember the word is Torah. The word for faith means being connected to the Torah no matter what. That's what it means. So nobody's connected to the Torah. And they move me to jealousy with that which is not Elohim, they have provoked me to anger with their vanities, and I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. What? Ain't that what Paul said too? Y'all gonna see in a minute, this whole book is connected. Paul knew this verse by heart. He knew this song by heart. He said, he said, Yah is going to provoke his people to anger with the heathen. Where did Paul get that from? Deuteronomy chapter. And that and that's um, um you're gonna find that in the book of Romans when you start reading chapter 9, 10. And 11. What I, what I leave off, let me keep going. Yes. For a fire is kindled in my anger and shall burn unto the lowest hell and shall consume the earth with her increase and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. Oh, now we're back in the revelation. The fire is coming. The fire's coming down. When we get to these bowls, you're going to see it. You've already saw it in Revelation because fire has already came down already. But now he's saying, this is how he's going to judge. I will heap mischiefs upon them. I will send mine arrows upon them. Wait, what? It's going to be me. That's why we were powerless against our enemies. Yah gave them power over us. They shall be burnt with hunger. Oh, my. 
Were we in hunger? Of course we were. And devoured with burning heat and with bitter destruction. And I will send the teeth of the beast upon them. We got movies where these wild animals and dogs were sent upon us. And we got pictures. I got pictures in here somewhere of in the land of our captivity, the heathen literally sending dogs on us and literally biting our skin. Fulfilling these verses and scriptures to the letter. <sighs> With the poison of serpents, of the dust, the sword without, the terror within. Oh, that means outside they want to kill you. Inside you're afraid. Shall destroy both the young man and the virgin. The suckling at the little child and the man with gray hair. This enemy is not going to have any regard for you. And again, I got pictures. I'm just not doing it today because most of them want me just to get this on record. So I'm just going to put it on record. But I got pictures of our elders being abused by this system, by this white supremacy Babylonian system. I got pictures of our babies being abused and it's terrible. And I got pictures of our young men and young women. To prove in scripture, there is no regard for you, old or young. Verse 27, were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy, lest the adversary should have behaved themselves strangely. And no, 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 I skipped the verse. Let me go back. Yes, verse 26. What? I missed that one. That's the verse I'm trying to get to. I said, verse 26, I would scatter them where? Into the corners. I'm going to scatter them to the corners. What corner? The four corners of the earth. And where are we? Scattered to the corners. Zion, Zion, if you can see that and you're still rolling with the more, would you put a 900,000 because we, we almost done reading this song? Can you see that this is our history? It's exactly what happened to us. It's exactly what we experienced as a people. And with 800 and some people still in the room after two hours and 39 minutes, understanding must be had, must be going forth. And some of y'all hearing this song must be eyes opening all over the world. And hallelujah, that Yah put it on my heart to read the whole thing to you. Because my job is to make you see it, not I, I have to help you see it. Once you see it, now you're going to have to deal with what you see. And you heathens and you sneak listers and you slumber bruisers in the room, you know I'm reading it straight out your Bible. Verse 26 again, I said, I would scatter them into the corners. I would make them the remembrance of them to and I will make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Were it not that I fear the wrath of the enemy, lest their adversaries should have behaved them so strangely, and lest they should say, our hand is high, and Yahuwah hath not done all this. Wait, what? He said, Part of the arrogance of the enemy is he going to feel like he did it with his own power. Verse 28, people always asking me questions. I have to answer them with the Bible. I keep telling you these people don't know anything about you. They don't know anything about your covenant. They don't know anything about your life, your history. They've been taught a doctrine of demons. How do you know that, Moray? Verse 28, 
They are a nation void of counsel. Neither is there any standing in them. Oh, that they were wise, that under that they understood this, that they would consider their what? Latter end. There it is again. Underline that in your Bible. You don't know what's going on. You don't know the end, do you? Because you sure wouldn't be acting like that. Israel, you wouldn't be acting like that if you really understood the end. And you heathens and you nations that held us in captivity and still putting knees on our necks till dead, you wouldn't be doing what you're doing if you really could see the end. And we're going to show you the end because the end is in the revelation. Let's continue. How shall one chase a thousand? and two put 10,000 to flight, uh, except their rock, there it is again, has sold them, and their Elo and Yahuwah has shut them up. Who did it? said none of this would be happening if he was here but he decided you know what I'm gonna let them go because they think they can do it without me they're going they're going over here they're gonna do this that make me jealous huh Tell you what, then I'll just stand back for a minute then. And we'll see whether or not you get better on your own. Or will things just continue to get worse and worse for you until I get back? Let me finish this song. I'll be here all day with you, Zion. Let me finish this song. The reason why we ended up was not because the heathen was so much greater or better or powerful. It was because the rock of our covenant gave us up because of our wickedness. For their rock is not as our rock, even our enemies themselves being judges. For their vine is of the vine of Sodom and the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall. Their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of dragons. The cruel venom of asp. Is not this laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasures? To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall not slide and do, uh, shall slide when? in due time for the day of their calamity is at hand and the things that shall come upon them make haste for Yahuwah shall judge his people and repent himself for his service. He'll do what? He's going to change. Yah is going to change his mind. That's the powerful part. <laughs> That's how the song ends. As bad as it's going to be, y'all's going to look over his people and be like, you know what? I still love them. They're really still mine. And what the heathen is doing to them, I never expected it to be like that. So I'm going to get them. When he sees that their power is gone, that's us. No power, no might, no weapons no tanks, no military, no government, no land, no, no wealth, no mountains, no streams, just nothing. And there was none shut up or left. And he will say, where are their gods now? Where are your gods? The rock in whom you trusted, where are they at? 
which did eat the fat of their sacrifice and drink the wine of their drink off. In other words, they took all your money. They took all your land. They had you killing all your children. They took everything from you. Now, where, they, where are they now? I tell you what, they ain't trying to help you. Let them rise up and help you and be your protection. No, they're not. See now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. Can't you see that? I kill. Talk, King. And I make a lie. I wound. And I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Get straight. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say, I live, how long? Forever. Now he getting down to the end of the song. Hallelujah. 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 And as he gets down to the end of the song, if I wet my glittering sword, that means sharpen it. If I sharpen my glittering sword, my hand take hold unto judgment. What? Wait, whoa, whoa. That sounds a lot like the revelation. We read in the other song that Yah's a man of war. He said, oh yeah. And when I get that sword, sorry. And what do we find out in the Revelation? Sharpening any two-edged sword. Found that out in the book of the Hebrews. We find out that the same sword he gonna slay all the nations with. Where'd he get it from? Deuteronomy, from the song. And take hold on judgment. I will render vengeance to my enemies. I will reward them that hated me. I will make my arrows drunk with the with blood and my sword shall devour flesh and that the blood of the slain and of the captives from the beginning of revenges upon the enemy. Everybody who has ever had us captive and has ever done anything to us will have their blood spilled by our king. The revenge is coming. You know better than you shouldn't have did it, you heathens. Rejoice, oh, you heavens, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants. When we get to them vials, you're going to literally hear that same exact word, that he's going to revenge the blood of us. He will render vengeance upon his adversaries and will be merciful unto his land and unto his people. That's us. I'll turn it all around for us. Do you know that's how that ends? That's the song that we're all supposed to have memorized. How does it end? He's going to render vengeance to his adversary and will be merciful to who? His land and his people. And Moses came and spake all the words of this song in the ears of the people. He and Joshua, that's three times they don't spell his name. He and Joshua, son of Nun. And Moses said in the end of all the speaking of the words to all Israel, and he said unto them, set your hearts to all the words which I testify among you this day, which shall command, which you shall command your children to observe to do all the words of this law. For it is not a vain thing for you, because it is your life. And through this thing, you shall prolong your days in the land, whether you go over Jordan to possess it. Hallelujah. 
the song of Moses. Put out on video for all the world to see, for all the world to hear, for all the world to know. Our history from the first captivity to our being gathered from the four corners of the earth out of our last captivity. The 400 years is over. I don't know about you. It won't be long. Our king is coming. And we're going home. I got to go. But if you enjoyed the song, if you learned something, if you saw it the way you never seen it before, put a one million in this chat. Let the whole world know. Don't be ashamed. This is our song we're going to sing. Our forefathers, yeah, they messed up. These generations, I know what well, we, but the remnant, we're coming out. Getting rid of the spot of the heathen, the wrinkles of sin. We're keeping the law, the statute. Honoring the covenant and turning back to our Elohim who has turned his face back toward us. Wave his hand. The second time. Now you understand why before the judgment he said sing them two songs. The, the one of the lamb and then sing that Moses song. Let me listen to that before I go to battle against these heathens and people who treat it. Just to remind the whole world that I've been planning this. And I'm coming back to set the record straight. This is our song of salvation. Hallelujah! Before you, before you go, support the work of the art. We support you. One love. Hallelujah! 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 I got to go. Shalom.